All right, so what we'll focus on now is the, uh, the plugin to be able to start selling products. So you've seen, um, we had last month's class, which was four weeks long, and then today is week three of this class. So we've had um, seven classes in total about the basics of WordPress. So you should see that all of this stuff is, uh, is free. You can download it and start using it, and you have the ability but notice all that we've had to do to get to this point. So that's why a lot of people go the route of, I'm going to sell my stuff on Etsy, I'm going to sell my stuff on Amazon, on eBay, because they've got the infrastructure set up. Um, perhaps at a certain point you'll feel much more confident doing this on your own without someone to help you out. And if you do, then, then great, you'll be on great footing to start selling your products. If not, then you'll have to reevaluate yourself and say, do I really want to sell my own products? Because there's a lot to do. There's still three more class meetings, well, this and two more, about the, just the plugin itself. Because now we're going to have to deal with a bunch of things like the product inventory, the product payment gateways, collecting payment, uh, shipping, and all of that good stuff that the other companies take care for you. Uh, now we're going to have to deal with. So there's two big plugins out there uh, that will help us sell products. So they are add-ons to WordPress. They're plugins. So here in the dashboard, let's hover over plugins and select add new. This doesn't come with WordPress. I don't think it'll ever come built in. To WordPress, I think we will always need to install a plugin because the, the spirit of WordPress has always been a blogging platform, a, a website creation platform, and not everyone needs to sell products. So I don't know if one day they will put uh, this plugin built in. But once you go to Add Plugins, on the right side you've got Search Plugins, and we'll search for one called WP. Uh, e dash commerce. WP E dash commerce. Then press enter. So this will then pop up with all of the results with your keywords, and a lot of things come up. The first result that I see is WP e-commerce, or oh, they changed the name so we don't need a dash anymore, um, WP e-commerce and it's by Instinct Entertainment. I've used this plugin several times with real clients and the, the big client that I have that uses it right now, remember this site, akiestexcoco.com, they sell uh, they sell their food on, through the website and it runs on this plugin. So you are able to order online and, and, and order products and, and all of that. And it's running the WP e-commerce plugin. It's a nice plugin. There's more than one e-commerce plugin. I'll, I'll mention two big ones, but this site right now, this real live site that you can buy real life products on, uses WP Commerce. Now, plugins, as I've said before, are created are third-party mini apps that different companies create. In this case, Instinct Entertainment. They are not affiliated at all with the WordPress company. They're their own company. And there's a cottage industry of companies making plugins to solve a problem, to, to fix something that people might have an issue with. One of them is to sell products. And since there's so many of them, it's a good idea to, if you're starting off new, to do a little research about which plugin is right for me. And the research is simply to look at a plugin, read more details, go to their website, maybe do a search for a testimonial, like WP e-commerce testimonial, and see what people say. Another way to research is, well, WordPress, the latest versions have made it easier to see here. Um, how many star ratings, how many people rated it, how many downloads, when was it last updated. There might be a really good plugin that your friend tells you about, but it has not been updated in a year, let's say. And in internet terms, especially for internet security, a year without updates is a long, long time. 
because within that time, perhaps someone figured out some sort of a hole in their security, and now your products, your credit cards are exposed or something. So this one was updated a month ago. And it says it's compatible with our version of WordPress 4.0. That's good. Now this has only got a three stars out of five. You might think, well, I want to go with five star product, uh, five star plugins, or, or four stars at the worst. And usually, yes, we want to do that. I would not get into a uh, a plugin, especially for e-commerce, with one star, two stars, three stars is in the middle. But it does have 884 ratings and it's got nearly 3 million downloads. So you think, well, if it's got so many ratings and so many downloads, why is it so low, the rating? Well, again, plugins are designed to solve a problem. And it stands to reason then, if people downloaded this plugin that does not solve their specific problems, what do people love to do on the internet? Complain. Complain. So it didn't solve my problem, it didn't do what I wanted, two stars. Other people that are happy with it, I, I, I think I've read that people, when they're happy with something, they don't say anything. When they're not happy with something, they say everything. So I, I think out of these 2.8 million downloads, a lot of people are happy with the plugin, but they just never bothered to click four stars. I think I'm guilty of that too. I use the plugin, I like it, I haven't taken the time to go click four stars. Can we do it now, actually? No, you have to do it elsewhere. Maybe that's part of the problem, too. So people that are really upset that they don't do what they want, they actually search out, where can I give it one star? And they do it. People that are happy with it, maybe don't. So normally, I wouldn't be recommending three stars for a plugin. But this one, I've used it. I can vouch for it. It works. They update it every, every once in a while. Here it was a month ago. It's got nearly 3 million downloads. This is the one we're going to use. Yes. Uh, can you use it whether it's hard product or information product? Does it make a difference? This plugin can be used for real products or virtual products. Sure. So you know, physically for you know this amazing pen or for the PDF that I wrote. So sure, or, or services as well. Yes. Um, if we go on the internet and we see like an e-commerce store that we like the layout, uh -huh. can we check their source and find out if they're using a well, first, if they're using Word, uh, WordPress and see if they're using what plugin? Can we see them in source code? Possibly. It depends. Uh, you might have to do a little bit of detective work. I'm going to go to the to the Texcoco site here and look at the source code. And I might have to kind of browse around. Do I see any keywords that say WP e-commerce, specifically that? I know that WP Commerce, however, uses the keywords WPEC. So if I go to the source code of a site and maybe search for WPEC, and if I find it, I can be pretty sure it's using WP Commerce. However, it's not showing up here. It might show up on another page. So sometimes I can't exactly get that answer just by looking at the source code. It doesn't hurt though. You could go in and poke around and see what, what you find, especially if you understand how this works. Um, and then maybe you'll figure out what plugins and code it uses. So the yes. In Firefox, you can go to any web any website, you can right click and you have uh, view page source. Keyboard shortcut control U, I guess, for uncover source code. <laughs> yes? It shows right there in the source code. What, were we looking at what line? 15? Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so on my line 15 here, 15 and 16, I see here plugins WP e commerce. Now they spelled it differently there. So I was searching for WPEC, but I guess it's WPSC. I hadn't looked in there very recently. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, this is one way. You go to the source code, you look at the HTML, and look around for the keywords WPSC. Yeah, you can also do a search uh, for the keyword plugins, and anywhere there's a plugin in this code, it should show up. Yes? Um, um, okay. I was wondering if it's a, um, the plugins are responsive. If you choose a theme that's responsive in design, 
will the plugin also be responsive, or does that sometimes appear on a separate page and then it may or may not be? Well, that's going to depend on the plugin. So when you're on the screen here researching the plugin, you want to go to more details and it should explain itself. Uh, but it depends on the type of plugin as well. Uh, what this plugin will do, will, it will create a bunch of files which we'll look at. And uh, it'll create some brand new pages on your site. So those pages will inherit the theme of your site. So if your theme is responsive, then those pages that this creates will also be responsive. You can always research it under more details. I see under details it also breaks down exactly how people uh, added, added their ratings. So, you know, it has more one-star ratings, and I'm sure that if we read people's comments, we'll see why. And I, and I think a lot of the times are, well, this plugin doesn't work with my authorized.net payment gateway, and that sort of thing. And honestly, there are times here and there that I run into issues that I think, well, I wish that was implemented a little bit better. But I think the positive aspects of the plugin outweigh the negative. Again, this might not solve the solution, your solution, your, your particular problem. So I'm going to show you another plugin. WP Commerce is the one we're going to use in this class, but here's another one. Up here on search, let's search for this plugin. WooCommerce. WooCommerce is another big famous e-commerce plugin. Let's check out its details. WooCommerce. <coughs> I suppose we don't write a space there, actually. There we go. So, no space. WooCommerce without a space. WooCommerce, excelling e-commerce. Now this one's got four out of five stars out of 787 um, ratings and then 4.7 million downloads. So more stars, more downloads, etc. Updated one week ago. You say, well, why don't we go with that plugin right away? Um, both of these are very viable plugins. And perhaps because the class is five weeks long, uh, which is longer than usual, perhaps we'll have time to uh, fully explore that one, depending how how much how far we go in the class. Uh, and I've used both, and I like both, but I've used WP eCommerce longer, so I kind of know my way around it a little bit more. And um, some negatives that I've seen with this plugin are uh, that a lot of the really useful features are like more plugins on top of this plugin. And so to kind of get get up and running, perhaps, might require more setup than the WP Commerce. So at the beginning of the class, I asked how what people's um, comfort level and experience level is. And most people have said, you know, you're, you're kind of beginner to, to intermediate. So this one, I would say, is the more intermediate to advanced plug-in. Uh, it'll require more setup. Uh, for example, when I said earlier, WP e-commerce, it will create some new pages for us, a product page, a checkout page, those sorts of things. This one doesn't. You have to do some more extra steps to create those pages. You have to add other extra features. So out of the box, I haven't looked at it very recently. You know, it's, it was updated one week ago. Maybe they're making it even more user-friendly. But I would say for beginners, we're going to use the other plugin. On your own, you're always welcome to experiment with this other plugin, WooCommerce, and see if it works for you. And I, as I said, I've used them both. I like them both, but I think for a beginner teaching class, uh, I'm going to do the other plugin. Now, I need to fully research, but one of my colleagues who's more a little more knowledgeable says, um, depending on your site, depending on the... Um, on, on, on the amount of traffic that you're getting and and the value of your of your products, uh, at some point this plugin might also over 
uh, not over, um, might, uh, might reach its limits, might reach its capabilities. The same thing for all of WordPress. If your site is very complicated with one, with I think it was over 100,000 elements, which means pictures and pages and uh, blog posts, you know, one, over 100,000 elements, then that's when WordPress and these plugins start to struggle because they weren't designed to run something like Amazon. Uh, so I don't think most of us will get into that problem, but if you do, you the next level up, uh, the next level above WordPress, the big brother of WordPress, is a platform called uh, Drupal. So if you want to research that, but hopefully that's not a problem that most of us will get to. So I'll write that uh, WordPress is great for sites with uh, less than a hundred thousand elements. And elements means everything of your site. So pages, posts, pictures, any sounds, products, etc. And then Drupal is better for anything more than 100,000 elements. Yes? It does, yeah. Everything that you add to WordPress adds up to these elements. Now, I don't think there's an easy way to check how many elements do I have in WordPress. There's no screen, I think, where you can go and it tells you, I've got 500 elements. But 100,000 elements, on the one hand, sounds like a lot. And on the other hand, maybe it might not be if you put a lot of pictures. Let's say you put one blog post and your blog post has 10 pictures. Well, if we do the math, one blog post per week with 10 elements, you know, 52 weeks times 10, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we're still adding up with what is that, like 500, 5,000? That's still a long way from 100,000 elements. So it could be years before you get to that point. And you can delete it after. Yeah, you can delete stuff that you no longer need that, that are old and keep that number down. Yes? What are we actually counting here? Well, it's every, basically, it's every entry in the database. So everything that's in the database, what, how many themes you have, uh, how many plugins you have, how many pages and posts and pictures that you have. So everything that's being put into the database. All right. I have a simple site selling virtual products. What is that? Have a simple solution? I'm going to say the simple solution is WP Commerce, the one that we're going to use right now we will be able to sell virtual products. So let's go back to look at the WP Commerce result. That's the one we're going to use and select install now. It wants to confirm, so click OK. It will connect to the WordPress site, download it, unpack it, install it, and then you need to remember to turn on Activate Plugin. And then there's a lot we can do here in a moment. Question? Uh, can you use it for site with any plugins? No. Yeah, that could happen. A plugin could conflict with another plugin, or a plugin might be dependent on another plugin. I know that that's the case in WooCommerce. WooCommerce, on one of the sites I'm currently working on, you know, I installed WooCommerce onto it, and then based on the theme also, because some themes are billed as a perfect WooCommerce theme. So there was a theme that we we're using, and then it, it, we needed work, we needed WooCommerce. We installed it, and then WooCommerce pops up that says, "Don't forget to install these plugins." And it was like four more plugins, and I installed those four. And then one more of those plugins said, "This plugin also requires that plugin." So I installed that plugin. So it ended up installing like six plugins, even though you know we can do this with one. And uh, how do you get around it if, uh, if your site depends on these two plugins? It, it appears in your business. The, the, the easy answer, but not the easy solution, is to not use that plugin. Because um, if it needs, 
if it needs if the plugin needs other plugins but those plugins conflict there's no easy answer to that you you would really and then the hard answer is you would need to rewrite the code okay. no one's going to do that so try a different uh, plugin All right so don't forget to activate plugin and we're going to take a break in a moment but before we do that this Activation of this plugin has many screens. A lot of stuff got added here. We'll go step by step what was added and then start using the plugin. But before we take the break, uh, I, I want to remind you, I haven't mentioned it in this class enough or at all, I want to remind you or make you aware of, in the classroom folder on Campus uh, WordPress 2, there's a brand new sheet, 5, which was not available last month because we didn't need it. So I'm going to give us a break at this point. If you want to print it, I recommend you do. Sheet number five. This is going to be our crash course into the plugin, and then we'll, of course, learn on learn together. So make sure you've installed the plugin, activate it. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll start using it. Ten minutes, so 10.05.